All right. Um, I have a 454, or I think, yeah, 454 uh, Chevy small block 92 TBI. Um, customer complaint is no pulse at the injectors. Um, he got a 12 volt battery or a little 9 volt battery. I mean, you can do these with 12 volts too, as well. So he got one of these guys right here. And then he was able to obviously, you know, power and ground it. Oh, that one's power. So I think you can see this. So the battery is pretty low. Um, if you wanted to test out your injectors, when the battery is fully charged, it'll like shoot out like a hardcore spray and then so forth. It'll kill the battery within like 10 seconds. Um, that's one way to test it. Um, if your injectors are working, you can either add a 12 volt. I believe this one's your positive. Yeah, so this one will be your positive, and then this is your negative. I don't think it should matter, but um, just do it that way because this is our positive wire. Also, um, if you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions, and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future. And we'll go ahead and start this video right after the intro. <laughs> All right, so basically one way to determine either this is your distributor or your computer. Basically, we have the HEI system right here with the pickup coil. Um, so this will be for our ignition coil, this side, and then this is for our fuel injector side. Now, this purple wire, I think, needs to have like a certain amount of voltage. Um, it outputs a signal if it doesn't. Then I believe that results to the computer if I was reading it right. Um, it's been a while. It's been like a week since I looked at the wiring diagram. Um, so again, there's only two things that you can have an issue with. Remember, you got to make sure you have a consistent 12 volts um, right here at this. If not, you got to check your ECM fuse. Um, I think it's ECM 1B. I think that's what it is on the fuse panel. Um, obviously this one's an RV, so it's a little bit different. Um, so if you have voltage going to it, then we know our fuse is good, but you can check your fuses anyways. Second, you need to make sure you're getting power to the, the distributor. Now we got spark, but we don't have, um, pulse. So, um, I always bring a test dummy distributor with, with me when I'm, when I'm working on a, on a car and stuff. So basically what you got to do is you got to put the key on the on position. All right, it's already on the on position. So right here, um, this one's an aluminum aluminum, aluminum uh, casing right here. So we can't ground it from right here. The only way we can ground it is from this piece right here itself. So one way we can do, we can actually hook up right here. So you see how right there, the the um, injector starting to pulse and the same thing right here you can i don't know if you can see that let me get that right there Let's see if you can see that so you see that little spark so we know we got spark and we're getting the like, um fuel so i mean obviously the distributors to fix but check this out I had to replace the computer. Um, we had to get another computer because I wasn't getting a signal. When you put the key in the on position, you should get a, a, a primary signal if the car has been sitting for a while. You should see the TBIs um, shoot like a little quick signal like that. It should do about two times. I think it's it's either one to three times it'll it'll pulse real quick. Um, once it does that, that'll give it a quick setup to start and so forth. Now, if you do get that, then just go straight to your distributor and, and see that. Um, you can grab a spare one. I mean, they're not going to charge you for it. You're just going to plug it. You're not. You're just doing a quick mock-up, and then you're going to spin it right here. You can use this as the ground. Now, if you have the steel housing, um, you can ground it out. This one I couldn't ground out again. Um, and so forth, I think... Yeah, maybe we can ground it out from right here. Let me see if we can ground it out from right here, just so it could be easier. All 
Let's see if I can ground it off in this bolt. Okay, so yeah. Um, perfect. So yeah, you can just ground it off in that bolt and that should work. One of the three bolts might work and so forth. Um, but yeah, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. But yeah, um, I remember a guy commenting on the other one saying that he didn't get anything. So obviously I wanted to kind of make another video on this just so he can, you guys can see of that now if you're getting all that and it's not starting you need to check out your idle air control valve your mass airflow sensor and there's a map sensor too you need to make sure you're getting um voltage this will be your map sensor idle air control valve and then throttle position sensor right here um but yeah um all right so here i'm going to be updating the video on this um after we were checking out the um, injector pulse by spinning the distributor obviously we knew everything was working fine so i went ahead and installed the distributor back in the new distributor and after putting everything back together i mean it's plug and play it's nothing crazy whatever but dude oh my god the thing didn't want to start and i had no injector pulse so i'm like what the heck so then I went ahead, took out the distributor. I started spinning it right here again, testing it. Now I'm not getting no injector pulse. And I'm like, for the God's sakes of my life depended on it, this car wouldn't start. All right, so I'm going to tell you some few things that you can check out. Um, so for our purple wire, it's going to be 0.5 volts, so half a volt. So when you check that, I think with the key on, you should read 0.5 volts. Our black wire, I think it's black red, that's going to be our ground wire that goes to the computer. This purple wire, purple white, goes to the computer too as well. Um, that's going to be our signal, our reference wire that sends a signal to the computer to be like, hey, ground out the injector. Because our red wire is going to be consistently always going to be power. Um, it's always going to be 12 volts. I think it's when you only put on the key on the opposition. Now the computer, what it does is that it sends a ground signal. So it's like a relay. So it just grounds, 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 grounds. Um, what you can do is you kind of need like a little lab scope for that. Um, it's it's kind of a little bit harder with the multimeter. Um, I mean, unless if I don't know how to do it right, pretty sure I'm pretty sure there's a way. But um, with the lab scope, you're actually able to see a faster response for that um what i did was is i used um the signal from right there uh, or the the positive terminal from the alternator and i just took this one out unplugged it and then you know just put my test lead right in there right inside right there just to touch that terminal and to make sure I'm, I'm getting at least voltage when I'm cranking it. And yeah, I do get voltage. So we're making a series contact. So the computer is obviously grounding it. I mean, all my wires checked out fine. I mean, everything. I checked the grounds and the power. I think you got to check B3. Um, there's B3, B6, or B7, something like that. You got to check out your ground circuits on that. Um, this is such a pain in the butt to test out because i got the chair in the way i got the motor right here and then i gotta lay in this awkward position so it's a huge pain in the butt all right anyways so what happened was after like I'm, I'm i'm checking out everything so i'm like let me start touching the wire um see maybe if i, if I got something going on maybe i missed something but i tested out everything and everything's fine i mean obviously if you're throttle position sensor is like wide open throttle it's going to flood out the thing and it will it'll prevent it from starting same thing for the map sensor what happened was is that <laughs> this sucks i shocked myself as i was spinning the distributor i left the the um, the ground cable right here and i shocked myself and then what i did was is i put this cable right here and i just sat it down right next to this uh the hook as soon as I did that, I started spinning the the um, the distributor by hand. The thing started injecting, so I'm like, "What the hell?" So I don't know what the heck happened in that time. It probably sent a whole voltage throughout the system, but yeah, I mean, as you can see now, it's working. <laughs> So
So you can see both injectors are working, but it wasn't working earlier. And I'm, I was, it, this is, this is a weird fluke. Maybe it sent a, a voltage shock. I don't know. But like I said, if my life depended on it, didn't work out. But yeah. Um, so yeah, again, like I said, this is just a little update during the process of it. If you guys know why that happened, comment down below. Give me your thoughts to to let me know what you think. Uh, All right, so we're back with this RV, and for the love of God, um, yeah. So as I was packing up all my stuff, the thing died right out. Again, no injector pulse. So we're gonna go ahead and check out everything. I'm gonna recheck everything, make sure I'm getting my voltage. <laughs> All right, man, I found out what the problem was. So I don't know what happened, but I'm not getting any power to that pink, that pink black wire right there. So what I did was, is I grabbed the seven and a half amp fuse and I just tied it into the, to the alternator. And then as you can see, we'll start this sucker up. So as you can see, it's working now. But what happens when we take it off, so I'm gonna just disconnect that, it should turn off. So you see how that died right out? So we're not getting any any voltage. So the, the only thing that goes to that wire is, is a fuse. It's somewhere in the fuse box, or it's a fusible link. I just don't know what wire that is. It's probably corroded um, for the most part. But yeah, I, I got it all figured it out. Either you can add a little jumper wire to it, but I mean, it, it's all up to you of how you want to do it. Um, just add a power with a fuse in it. But yeah, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future. And thanks for watching.